I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at working with groups within Logic Pro. Groups allow us to perform tasks to multiple audio streams all at the same time. And what we're going to see is that they're very useful for editing, for mixing, and actually for a range of other tasks as well. Let's have a look. So firstly, let's just hear the piece of music we're going to be working on. Okay, now the important part within this track from a group's point of view are these four separate audio files which make up the drum kit. These are the first four tracks within this project, the blue regions at the top. And effectively, all of these are individual pieces of the same drum recording. I've got a kick channel and an overall sort of kit, a microphone, a shaker part, and a snare. And what I want to be able to do is to make edits or changes to these as a group of files, hence, the use of groups. So how do I actually use those within Logic Pro? Well, if I open up the mixer, what I have a chance to do is to see all of the tracks that make up my project. So here's the mixer down at the bottom, and we can see that the four solo channels are here. These are the drum parts. So what I'm going to do is to select all of them, and then what I have a chance to do here is to select a group for them. Now, at the moment, you can see that there is no group selected. And in fact, I haven't set any groups up for this project yet, so we're doing this completely from scratch. So what I'm going to do is to select group one, and immediately you can see that the number one is inserted on all four of these tracks. Okay, well, number one isn't terribly helpful. What I actually want to do is to label this as drums, and you can see that I'm doing that over here in the little groups pane that's been created the moment I create a new group. So having named it, what I'm then going to do is to open up the settings for this group, and what we can now see is some of the parameters that are going to be controlled when we create a group. Now, what that means is, effectively, if I make a change to any individual mixer channel strip or any editing for any of these parts, it will apply to all of the other tracks that are assigned to the same group. Now, to make sure that that happens, what I'm going to do is to click editing. It's one of the parameters that I'd want to have be controlled in this way. And what we can see, if I come out of solo mode for a second, is just how valuable that is. Let's suppose I decide that what I want to do is to make the little fill that's happening at the end of bar five also happen in bar three. Well, without a group, what I need to do is to select all of these audio files and click to make the uh, cut where I want that to happen. But because I've got groups enabled, all I have to do is to click one of them and that edit will be applied to all four tracks, which means I'm not constantly trying to select lots of audio files at once. Now, within the context of this track where I've only got four audio files and they're all next to each other within my mixer arrangement, it's not too big a deal for me to select just uh, four tracks and make sure they're all highlighted before I make a cut. But of course, what I might do is to go and add more tracks to my drum group later. Much further down within my arrangement, I might add a shaker part or some congas or something else. And what I can do is feed those into the same group, and even when those tracks aren't next to each other, they'll be affected by the same edits, the same cuts. So the advantage there is really clear. What I now have a chance to do is to say, okay, well, what I also want to do is to cut at this point here, and then what I'm going to do is to cut here, and now I'm in a position to throw away this piece of audio. And again, because all of them are selected, I only have to pick up one of them and all of those regions will come into place and we're in good shape for me to make that edit. And of course, I can then make adjustments to this audio to drag back and, and sort of fill in the hole that's created by the way that I've made that edit happen. So you can see that every time I click on one individual audio file, all four are selected because they're grouped together. But I can do more than that. You can see that before we started looking at groups, I'd set a volume balance between these four individual parts um, so that effectively, for example, the kick channel is at minus 8 dB, whereas the main kit microphone is quieter than that. Now, effectively, having created this, uh, this sort of mix balance that I like, I want to be able to retain that. Well, one of the things that's also been controlled within my uh, mixer is uh, volume. So the group um, volume button is on, which means that if I push the fader for one of these microphones, you'll see that all four of them is moving. Again, groups here are now controlling the relative mix positions of the individual tracks as well. And you can see I can do more than that. If I select mute, they're all going to mute. And you can see that the same thing is uh, available to me for all kinds of other things as well. Solo, record, record sends as well. So let's suppose for a second that what I wanted to do was to select all four of these tracks, set up a new auxiliary. I'm gonna set uh, bus two. 
And what I can then do is to say, right, actually, this is going to be a little reverb. Maybe I can set up a reverb. I'm going to use FabFilters Pro R just to create a little bit of reverb around this sound um, on this auxiliary track. And what I then want to be able to do is to say, right, well, all of the sends that I might put in for this individual group, I want those to be governed by the same controls too. So I'm turning all of those on. And what that immediately means is that if I move the control for one of those um, individual sends on one of the mic channels, then all four of them are going to be affected. So what we've got here is a chance to control a whole range of tracks from one track. It's almost as if all of the drums have been folded down onto one channel. And that's incredibly useful when it comes to editing and even to mixing. Now, I know what you're thinking. What happens if I suddenly decide that I want my snare channel to be louder? At the moment, if I push its fader, that's also going to affect the faders for the kick drum, for the kit, and for any other elements that are put into this group. Well, the great thing is that I can temporarily bypass groups altogether by pressing Shift and G. And by doing that, you can see that just for a moment, all of these, whilst uh, they're still assigned to this group, that group has been switched off. And what that then means is I can select my ch snare channel, turn its volume up, simply by giving this fader a push. And then what I can do is to come back to Shift G and turn it back on again. So what that allows me to do is to temporarily bypass the group to make a change to an individual channel. And remember, that could be anything. If I wanted to make a, an edit to just the snare drum, again, I could just bypass the groups for just a moment, make that change, and then turn groups back on. So within this video, we've looked at groups. We've seen that what they allow us to do is to configure a range of things which can be controlled from a single channel. By assigning lots of sounds into a group, we can select just one of the sounds within it. We can make edits, we can push faders, we can uh, control auxiliary sends, we can turn on and off mutes, solos, all kinds of things. So groups allow us to control lots of channels from just one.